So, like many of you, I sat down and watched the March 8th Nintendo Direct, and within that half an hour, I pretty much had expanded my video game expenditure budget for this year by about 200 bucks. But you see, the thing is... we have a very different economy to the rest of the world. Our dollar, compared to the United States dollar, we get about 70 cents back, and if we compare it to the British pound, we'd get around 52 cents back. So when the Nintendo Switch released, it retailed in America at $299, so that translated at the time to approximately 430 New Zealand dollars, and that's not taking into account any taxes for you know, distribution and getting it over here and, and whatnot. But when I got my Switch at the midnight release, I paid $560 for the console itself. Now that translates to a United States dollar of around $410. That's over a third of another Switch console. That's a pro controller or another game and a, another maybe shitty game squidged in there as well. And this is why buying video games in New Zealand sucks. See, prior to the 2008 global financial crisis, things were a lot more balanced. The comparison was a lot closer together. $60 for a game in the United States would roughly compare to about $90 to $100 in New Zealand, which is kind of what they have been priced at for the last 10 years or so. So everything was pretty fair, but nowadays $60 United States dollars is approximately $80 New Zealand dollars. Despite the fact that $60 United States dollars buys you $80 New Zealand dollars, games are consistently released in New Zealand at $100 or higher. Personally, I'd really been looking forward to the release of Payday 2 when it was announced last year. When it finally creeped up to its release this year, only one of the three major retailers in New Zealand was actually stocking it, and when you went to check out the price for it, it was $120 New Zealand dollars. And this is not a limited edition, this is not anything special, this is just a port of a 7 year old game. It's a standard edition, it's the same cart with the same Nintendo flavour. So I scoured through a whole bunch of other retailers trying to find out when they were going to release it and what their price would be. And I found out that they weren't actually going to sell it because it was an EB exclusive, which meant that they got to bump the price up to 120 bucks and we had to just take it. For anybody out there who's watching this from outside of New Zealand or Australia, EB is basically the New Zealand cousin of GameStop. So fast forward to the present, and prior to the March Nintendo Direct, I've been adding up the price of my new wish list, and whew, boy does it hurt. See, they've been keeping the same pricing strategies going forward. This has set a new golden standard for what the prices will be for the new games coming out over the next couple of months. The Fractured Butt Hole, $119.99. New Smash Bros, $119.99. Hyrule Warriors, only a modest $99.99, which is kind of the standard that we're used to. But look, why, why is 8? That game? It looks really good, I really want to get it, but check it out here. $129.99. It defies logic. These are the prices on EB Games, which, as I said, is the equivalent of GameStop, but if you check the American counterpart, most of these games retail for $59.99, which should be $80 in our currency. So in, in my local currency, that's a $40 difference just for shipping this over the Pacific Ocean. I, I don't understand <laughs> where that extra tax comes from. Another of the major retailers in New Zealand is an online store called Mighty Ape. You can pick up if you live in the Auckland region, but uh, Mighty Ape does offer a same day delivery option, which you have to pay for, and they also have a delivery option that gets you new releases on day one of the release, usually. Depends where you are in the country. If your courier service isn't that great, or if it covers a wide area or a rural area, you may have to wait until very late in the day, or you may have to wait until the next day even. I, I myself live in quite a central location, I had to wait till 3pm on day, the day of the release of this game, and that, that kind of wasn't really acceptable in my opinion. So Mighty App generally tend to price their games more around the $90 to $100 mark, which is more acceptable, but you do have to wait for that delivery, rather than walking and getting a game at 9am in the morning and then being able to play it all day like a normal person would want to do. So having a competitor out there that is a lot cheaper, you'd think that EB would have some sort of price guarantee to beat their more competitive prices. And they do, however the catch is, they only offer that price if it's a non-online store. So something like JB Hi-Fi, which is I think our equivalent to your target in America. And JB Hi-Fi just don't 
keep up to date with many good game titles as far as I can tell like they're kind of delayed in getting them in so what can we really do about it here in New Zealand we're very isolated we don't really have many options aside from these three main retailers that I've told you about plus a couple of others that don't really keep up to speed with the latest games and trends so I'm happy to say that there is a solution out there that does make the price point a little bit easier to swallow and being a gamer in New Zealand a little less sucky and before I go ahead and reveal what this is I just want to make the point that I'm in no way affiliated with this company I'm about to talk about aside from the fact that I'm a customer of theirs and if they ever end up watching this um, just DM me I'd, I'd really like to talk about maybe getting some game points uh, if you know what I'm talking about I'd really appreciate that thank you a lot NZ Game Shop is an online retailer that is based in the UK but distribute games to New Zealand. They also have a distribution centre and a website based in Australia called Aussie Game Shop which works in a similar way because I'm, I'm pretty sure Australia gets shafted in the same way that New Zealand does just probably not to the same degree. I think their um, they're, they're better wages over there uh, act as a bit of a lubricant for that, that uh, shafting. Essentially they target New Zealand and Australian customers because they're aware of this price gap in the market and they want to compete against that, which they really deliver on. Check this out for example. Mario Tennis Aces was listed as $19.99, but on here it's $73.99. Wise 8 was coming up as almost $130, but over here it's $66.99. These are all in New Zealand dollars, by the way. Hyrule Warriors was coming up as $99.99, if you remember from retailers here, but um, NZ Game Shop has it for $74.99. They also have this game. Hmm. Might be worth checking out. Might be worth, might be worth playing that one. And they have Payday 2 on here as well for $62.99, which is oddly out of stock. And yes, they have the fractured butthole for an acceptable $74, which I have already pre-ordered. You might also notice underneath the prices there are these player points as well, which you accumulate every time you make a purchase. Those basically translate to dollars that you can use to make purchases. I think a thousand player points equals one dollar. It's basically getting cash back a couple of dollars every time you buy a game. So if this is a viable option, you may be wondering why I have a video that's called buying games in New Zealand really sucks. Well, while the prices are awesome, the delivery time from this site, unfortunately, it comes from the UK, so it takes anywhere from one to two weeks for your game to actually be delivered. I mean, shipping is free for items over $50, which is really awesome, but still, waiting that one to two weeks for a brand new day one release is, is murder. You know, the, the amount of spoilers I've had waiting for games to come, uh, come across. I had Rhyme spoiled for me before I got it. I found out it really sucked before I even got a chance to play it. So that was, you know, I was really looking forward to doing that. So th therein lies the other problem when I went to trade in Rhyme for something more suitable. I found out that I had a UK rating on the game rather than a New Zealand rating. And the problem with that is they have to send it away to get it re-rated or, or the correct rating sticker on it so that they can legally sell it. It also affects you if you want to on-sell your game yourself through an online auction site similar to eBay or TradeMe. Um, they can effectively take those auctions down if you don't have the correct rating for the region you're selling it in. So that's the issue in a nutshell right there. We pay too much because we always have when it was fair and then when the global economy crashed we just kept paying the same amount and now due to inflation it seems to be that we're paying $20 more than what we would have paid for two or three years ago. The solution in this case seems to be that we'd push back against the New Zealand market by utilizing sites like NZ Game Shop to buy at a cheaper rate. Sure we take the hit with having to wait for the game to arrive but it may force more of these retailers to reconsider the prices that they're using and use a more competitive price to really you know drive us back to using them. Uh, also the downside to that is that to cut for their losses they end up selling games for $150 a piece which would, uh, would, would suck. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm not an e economist so economist, e economin, economist? It's economist right? That's what I'm not. So I don't know if it's going to be one or the other but the logical point I'm trying to make is that if we try and divert sales away from them maybe they will become more competitive and, and start you know, being more fair to us. I mean, personally, I'd love to give my money to a company that operates within New Zealand and pays New Zealand citizens because it all goes back into my own economy. Um, but I think long term, it makes sense to give the money to somebody else so that you bring that pain to those local retailers and they um, decide whether or not what they're doing is fair because they're getting the game from a distributor that sets the retail price and for some reason they decide to just set it a lot higher for New Zealand and Australia. No one really knows why.
Oh yeah, we do. We know why. It's because they like the money. They like the, they like the, the dollar signs in their eyes. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Take them as you will. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have a different opinion or if you have some information that I'm not privy to or if I made a mistake with any of the information I provided you. And if you're entertained by this video in any, any way at all, click that subscribe button. Um, I don't know why. This is the first time I've ever made a video like this. I don't plan to make another one. This is basically, in essence, this is a, a well thought out rant um, that I just got my heckles up over the last couple of weeks after, after this guy came out. And um, seeing these directs and the prices, and and, and 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 trying to decide how I'm gonna how I'm gonna pay for that, for the family and and all that sort of thing. So that's that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. That's when I'll see you. I s so dumb. Yeah.